All right, guys, so this is the first video. Um, I wanted to make a kind of a series that talked about certain pathways that I think are like kind of highly tested on. So this is the first one, uh, and it comes uh, mainly from the, the lung um, region. And, you know, if, if you know what normal is and, and you understand how mankind has kind of interpreted that, you know, to, uh, taken advantage of that um, in terms of medications, then you'll be in, in, in good position to answer those questions um, on the step exam. And the first couple questions are pretty, um, I think they're kind of too sim simplistic. So if you want to skip all the way to the, the third question more toward the end, I think that's at the level of, of really where step one's at. But um, anyways, you've got to know this pathway, and this will be the first in a series of where I hit the most common pathways that they test on. So hope you like the video. All right, guys, so here's the question. It says, researchers are developing a new drug for moderate severe asthma treatment. It works by reversing bronchoconstriction. <clears throat> From the research data, it does not have bronchodilator effects. The drug works most similar to which of the following uh, medications. And of course, you can see these, but there's a pathway that, <clears throat> that I like. You know, I, I've seen multiple, multiple questions on it. So you got to have this pathway down for your step exam when it comes to the lung, okay? And the last question in this video will be really kind of tied into the last um, farm video that we did. So, and this is straight from your, uh, your step one book, but let's just go through it. Bronchial tone, okay? So we're in the lung. We're in the lung. If you go this way, it dilates, right? They're going to call it bronco... Uh, dilation, dilatation, but it gets bigger, okay? It gets bigger. Now, if it goes this way, and this is just how, you know, how God made us, you know, you have the bronchial tone, and it can either get bigger, dilate, or it can bronchoconstriction, get smaller, okay? And we know that. You know, you know all the basic terminologies and stuff. So dilation or constriction, it's going to go one or the other. So what makes it? Well, bronchodilation, you know, what's the natural thing that God did to, to allow us to dilate? Cyclic AMP, okay? Cyclic AMP. If, I, if, my, if I'm in the lungs and I get some cyclic AMP, then I'm going to bronchodilate, okay? If I'm in the lungs and I want to constrict, okay, I, it's going to be on the acetylcholine, okay, or adenosine, okay, and this is just just represents a receptor. So, again, very simple. If I'm in the lung and I do cyclic AMP, I'm going to dilate. If I'm in the lung and I have an acetylcholine in the receptor or adenosine, then I'm going to constrict and get and smaller. So. With that being said, you know, what's this natural pathway here? Well, I have ATP, right? ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and then it goes in this direction, and then in the setting of adenylate cyclase, so I have ATP with adenylate cyclase makes, you know, there's your cyclic AMP, right? Remember how we, how we, we kind of showed that in the farm thing? So that gives me my, so ATP, the setting of adenylate cyclase, makes my cyclic AMP, which allows me to bronchodilate, and then to break this down, to make this kind of stop, you have this PDE, known as what, phosphodiesterase, okay? And what this, this kind of, you know, this kind of breaks this down, breaks the, breaks the cyclic AMP down, and into um, just AMP, all right? So here's the two things. So if this is normal, right? This is normal. ATP with the adenylate cyclase makes cyclic AMP, which bronchodilates, and then to make this, because eventually it can't stay on forever, so the phosphodiesterase will kind of say, okay, time for you to, time for you to go down, and then make cyclic AMP, and that happens naturally. So what happens? You know, medicine comes in, and says, well, let's take advantage of this. And so what does it do? It says right here that I can use a beta agonist, okay? And this is gonna activate adenylate cyclase, right? And if you go back to that farm, that, um, you know, the GS, you know, pretty much the GS, GI, GQ, but the GS with the beta, beta agonist such as albuterol, 
okay? It's gonna activate this, which is gonna increase my adenylate cyclase, which is gonna increase my cyclic AMP, which is gonna make it dilate, okay? Because you wanna breathe, right? That's why you do the albuterol for like, a res for like an inhaler. Um, iso, pro, gosh, isoproternal? I was saying that's more B1 um, and B2. Okay, albuterol mainly just uh, the B2, okay? Isoproternal, B1, B2. Anyways, long story short, it's a beta agonist, and then it activates adenylate cyclase, which increases cyclic pain with bronchodilates, okay? So that's one way he, they made the medications. Now, they come over here and say, well, why don't we just inhibit, well, why don't we, if, if we just inhibit phosphodiesterase, what's gonna happen? If we inhibit him, that means this guy's gonna stick around longer and we'll get more dilation. Okay, cool, what medication's gonna do that? Theophylline, okay? And this is, you know, uh, it's been around long, long, long time. You don't see it very much, but every now and then there's an old person comes in on, on this stuff because it just works for them. So, but theophylline inhibits phosphodiesterase, which then allows that to stick around. So theophylline, the thing about theophylline, it's very uh, cardiotoxic, okay? It's part of that P450 system that we talked about. Um, so that it interferes with other medications. Neurotoxic, but at the end of the day, it prolongs cyclic AMP. That's the mechanism. I'm in the lung. All I care about was whether I can make something get bigger, dilate, or, make, or, or naturally it gets smaller. That's the way God made us. How did he do it? By using cyclic AMP through this pathway. How did man come in and take advantage of this? He made beta agonist, which increases cyclic AMP through adenylate cyclase, or he made theophylline, which inhibits phosphodiesterase, which increases cyclic AMP, which dilates, okay? Now, down here, as you know, acetylcholine, well, if I have acetylcholine right here, it's gonna constrict. Now, a lot of times, you know, we, if, if someone's having some type of uh, attack, you know, in the lungs where they can't breathe, you, want, you don't want constriction, you want the opposite. So you really, you wanna have this guy and say, man, dilate, 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 let's open these guys up. But another way to do it, more say long-term, is to prevent the acetylcholine from binding. If I can prevent this guy from binding, then I can prevent constriction. So then they made medications that come in here and inhibit the acetylcholine in the lung. And, you know, they call those muscarinic um, antagonist. And you just gotta know them by name, which is like the ipratropium. Ipratropium, okay? Or like COPD, ipratropium. Okay, what does ipratropium do? It inhibits acetylcholine, because what if, if acetylcholine does do this, what happens? It bronchoconstricts, we don't like that. And on the other side, if adenosine, it would, would naturally have this thing constrict, so why don't we do something that's gonna inhibit adenosine? What is that medication? Our old friend, theophylline. Okay, same rules apply, cardiotoxic, P450. But if you know this pathway, because this is where the questions that I've seen come from, you know, you have to know what normal is. You have to know the medications that, that man has done to take advantage of this normal pathway, whether it's albuterol, isoproteranol, theophylline, or the ipratropiums, and that's it. So let's go back, let's go back to our question. Researchers are developing a new drug for moderate severe asthma treatment. It works by reversing bronchoconstriction. Oh, bronchoconstriction. Here was tone. I know bronchoconstriction was this way, and I either had acetylcholine or I had adenosine, okay? And then from the research that it did not have bronchodilator effects. Okay, cool, because that means it didn't have nothing to do with up here. Uh, the drug works most similar to the following medications. Now, out of all these, albuterol was up here, right? It was more of a cyclic AMP type of guy. Um, theophylline is uh, down here, but it didn't have any bronchodilator effects, which theophylline's also up here. So, you know, I kind of like that one, but the fact is it said no, no bronchodilator, so I'm gonna kind of take him off the board leave albuterol and leave sulfate. These are all the same thing, and they're up on the top. The only answer for this one's gonna be the ipratropium, because you gotta know that that comes in here and inhibits the acetylcholine, okay? 
All right, so in this question, correct answer to protropium, you, but you gotta know the basic pathway of how things dilate versus constricting the lung and the medications involved. This one says, a nine-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department because of sudden onset of difficulty with breathing and cough while playing outside during the cold. He has a history of allergies during winter. Oxygen sats 89%, otherwise vitals are stable slash normal. Wheezing is noted upon examination. Which of the following receptors does the medication interact with that will alleviate the patient's um, condition? Okay. Well, we know, I mean, just to cut, cut the chase here, we know it's not alpha-1, these, these guys aren't even involved. So now you're down to beta-1, beta-2, and we know that beta-1, you know, you have one heart, and then we also know beta-2, we always say that is associated with uh, the lung, and forgive me because I, I forget all the different lobes. Anyways, beta-2 is gonna be the one because um, the medication can be albuterol, like an inhaler, and again, there's my tone, it dilates, it constricts, cyclic AMP is, is there, adenylate cyclase, ATP, uh, phosphodiesterase, and then um, AMP, right? If I go right there, that's beta, beta 2, and it's going to be albuterol, all right? I mean, you can just rattle this off, but you got to know the pathway. I can't stress that enough. And then the last one here says, and this is a good one because I like... I like this. This is, this is more step level, in my opinion. A 22-year-old male with family history of asthma presents to the emergency department with shortness of breath while exercising. He is not taking any medication currently. His vitals are unremarkable other than oxygen saturation in the upper 80s. The resident physician reports wheezing being heard upon auscultation. Which of the following would be the underlying function of the administration of the albuterol? Right? So... It's one extra step, right? Because we know that the albuterol, again, we have tone. This is going to be dilate, right? And, you know, I guess I should come in here and do it a little bit bigger. It goes like that. Phosphodiesterase, AMP. We got cyclic AMP. We got adenylate cyclase and ATP, right? And so you know that it's albuterol, so it's going to do what? Something with adenylate cyclase, right? All this phospholipase C, all that kind of nonsense, that's off the table. So B and, B and D are done. But you had to know what, okay? You got to know beta 2 is what receptor? Was it GS, GI, or GQ? Remember that? Remember how we did that? Remember the adenylate cyclase was right there? Um, had the AMP? I mean, we, we, we just, remember, again, adenylate cyclase. Um, had this, we said cyclic AMP, et cetera, et cetera. And so if we said which of, the, which, which of these, remember this one was the have one M&M, okay? These are my mad twos. Everything else, okay, everything else goes with the G stimulatory. So you had to know that the albuterol, since it's using beta 2, is a G stimulatory and it activates adenylate cyclase. Okay? This is a good question. I like this one because you had you had to know the receptor. And that's why it's important. You gotta know the have one M and M, you gotta know the MAD twos. Everything else goes in the G stimulatory because if you don't know that, you would have just jumped on answer choice I, perhaps, even though you, if you didn't know what GI or perhaps they should have put G, um, GQ there, right? Because essentially they put all three options and you had to know it's a G stimulatory. So, once again, guys, you gotta know. Let me see if I have that one. You gotta know this pathway. And again, I'll put these things on the website at some point. Um, but you just gotta have it, hands down. So this is the first video in the pathways and I'll, I'll do the next one. Hope it was helpful.